so hello guys what's up and welcome back to my youtube channel it's me your girl barista neze and this is nezeville today's video is going to be a very short one i promise you a lot of you a whole large number of you have reached out to me constantly within the last couple of months to please provide an update on the Celine and a FIBA case. So many people wrote me privately while some cannot stop dropping it in the comment section, even on unrelated videos. I see these comments. I do understand your burning desire for an update and I am also abreast of my implied duty to provide you with one, especially considering the fact that I covered that story very extensively. And of course you guys would naturally expect that I bring you up to speed on events that have occurred since the last time we spoke about it. So it's important that we have this conversation first so we can get a break with the constant demands for updates and secondly, so we can know where we are. So a few months ago, in May precisely, two young ladies, Celine Undudim from Potakot in River State, and Afiba Tando from Ghana traveled from their base to see a man that they had met online, a man called Andrew Ochekwa. 51-year-old Andrew is both a convict and a fugitive. Okay, we can use words, past tense. He spent most of his life residing in the UK. Andrew had spent jail time for assaulting a woman and is also wanted by the Milton Keynes Police Department for sexually harassing another and he escaped back to Nigeria before the UK authorities could clamp down on him. While in Nigeria, Andrew continued with his business and his obsession for hurting women and this time, given the environment and the security situation, he operated with more laxity, more frequency and more impunity. I dare say. Andrew Ochekwo encountered his own nemesis when Celine Anafiba went incommunicado only a few hours after they arrived his place in Aba. Thankfully, before they disappeared, they had raised an alarm to their friends in Patakot, notifying them that Andrew had kidnapped them and that they were in harm's way. They also made a short video, a short clip of the room where they were held hostage. Andrew was tracked and arrested and taken to Umwahia, the state capital. But instead of giving this case the seriousness that it very well deserved, instead of exploring every avenue to get information from Andrew on the whereabouts of selling and a fever, he was allegedly treated like the victim. He was given a VVIP treatment while in custody. Totally frustrated at how the police were handling this case in Umwahia, Celine and Afiba's family wrote a petition to the Inspector General of Police and that brought about an order from the IGP mandating that this case be transferred to Abuja, the capital city, and of course the suspect Andrew extradited. Andrew never made it to Abuja. He was shot and killed in police custody while on the way to Abuja. And the circumstances surrounding Andrew Ochekwa's death still remains unclear and mysterious. Hmm. This case generated such huge buzz on social media with widespread demand for the police to uncover the whereabouts of Celine and Afiba and to explain how the only person who could for certain say where these two ladies are was obscurely killed in police custody. After days getting updates from a civilian in such high profile suspected murder and kidnap case, the inspector general through the first public relation officer released a statement on Monday, the 10th of June, 2024. A part of it read, just the parts. In light of the public interest and the gravity of the allegations, the IGP has deemed it necessary to institute a meticulous investigation into the roles played by the team which carried out the initial investigation. Okay, whatever he said there. 
we have several videos covering that. I'm going to maybe make them into a playlist or even if you search Selena and Afiba by Nezerville, you will get all of those videos. And this statement concluded saying, the monitoring team has been given a two-week time frame, a two-week time frame to complete its investigation and present a comprehensive report. Ladies and gents, going by my calculation, this comprehensive report due on the 28th of June, 2024. Here we are, over three months after this pledge was made by the IGP. And the question remains, what happened to Selim and Afiba? First, there was a decomposing body that was discovered very close to Andrew Ocheko's house. And that decomposing body was wrapped with a curtain, a piece of curtain, similar, no, not similar, identical to what was in Andrew Ocheko's house. That body, the remains, was taken to the government hospital there in Abia State for a thorough examination to determine who it was. Was it Selin? Was it a FIBA? Or was it another victim that we do not even know about? Until now, until now that we speak, that body has either not been examined or the results have not been made public. And one may wonder, does it take forever to run these examinations? An update here is that it has come to my knowledge that Celine and Afiba's families have shown unwillingness, reluctance to submit themselves for their DNA samples to be collected. Their claim that the church, their pastor, have confirmed to them that their children are alive and running that test will be countering their fate. That is the report going out on that subject. Secondly, the second update is that it will interest you to know that Andrew Ocheko's family has filed a petition to the Inspector General of Police demanding justice for his unexplained and untimely death and ends that he met right in their custody. They have threatened to sue the police if they do not demystify the circumstances surrounding his demise. Give him justice and punish every officer fingered in that act. This news as expected was very triggering for a lot of people. They were like, what, 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 wait, what did you say? Justice for who, Andrew? Are you kidding me? Where were you when your son was carrying out kidnap and rape sprees. Did you demand for justice for his victims? What about justice for all the ladies that he harmed? His two latest victims are still nowhere to be found up till today and you're sitting there talking about justice for the perpetrator? I know this news will get a lot of people furious. I understand your annoyance and believe me, I personally relate to them and share in them. But in all honesty, legally speaking, they are very well within the ambits of their rights to do what they are doing. The truth is that no person, even the most notorious criminal, no person is permitted to be summarily executed on the streets like a dog. There are modes of operations to everything. There is the investigation, there is the charging to court where a prima facie case exists, there is trial, there is judgment, there is sentencing, and then there is execution of judgment. He should have had his day in court. So to allegedly eliminate their son, their brother, uncle, whatever he was to them is illegal. Without his own version of the story is illegal. And it should be pursued. Not because we give a fig about Andrew Ochequa's welfare, but because if the police is encouraged or excused to carry out extrajudicial killings with laxity someday, it could be an innocent man facing their rifle. And come to think of it, if Andrew was alive, perhaps the whereabouts of Celine and Afiba would have been uncovered whether they are dead or alive. So while some people have shown absolute disdain for Andrew's family's guts, nerves, to begin a campaign for justice for him, some others have thrown their support for that, saying that we are not in a dictatorship. We do not run totalitarianism. Due process 
must be followed in every case. Do drop your comments about this update down in the comment section. Does it offend you or do you support this move that his family has made? And just to add for the sole purpose of knowledge, in the criminal justice system, especially in more advanced jurisdictions, the perpetrator's family are not seen as the villains. It is not only the victim's family that are perceived as the victims in the case. The justice system also finds itself handling the perpetrator's family with some level of empathy as long as they did not contribute, aid or abet the crime. So you will typically hear judges in these advanced crimes addressing them not with scorn or disdain but with sympathy as well because they themselves are also in a state of shock, pain, ridicule, their own lives ruined forever, the family name tainted for life, the stigma of having a criminal come out of that family, crushing their souls, and they have to live with that dark cloud for the rest of their life for an offense that they did not commit. So again, do you understand with Andrew Ochekwa's family for probing to know what happened to their son? Or you had team go to hell? Your son was the devil. And the only prayer and hope that we have for him is that he rots in hell. Drop your thoughts about this update, this news of justice for Andrea. Now for the update on the whole outcome of this investigation. An investigation that was due two weeks from the 10th of June and has remained unpublished and unaddressed 18 whole weeks after. Most unfortunately and dismayingly, the IGP, the Inspector General, has failed woefully to keep up to his deadlines. And even more embarrassingly is that there has been no updates, no reason, no word at all to assure the people, to reaffirm confidence in them, to say, okay, yes, this is due on this date, but we haven't finished. Some other things came up, we are looking at it. Please, we will have to extend this time so we can give you a holistic report. Nothing like that. Everybody thrown in the dark. I find it extremely ludicrous that a police officer at the IGP's level can give a public commitment to make a report on a serious issue involving two missing girls that have still not been found. Doesn't honor it and makes no attempt at all to give reasons why. It is the height of impunity and disregard. And it just makes people lose confidence in the justice system, lose trust in the police and just give up on the entire system. No accountability, no answerability. It is so unfortunate. But we will not give up on this case. We will keep waiting. We will keep looking forward to. We will keep nudging. I personally would write a formal letter of inquiry to the IGP. And I would also take to their social media accounts to nudge them on this case. Demanding or requesting that an update be provided. It might amount to nothing, but it might amount to something. So I'll take my chances rather than do nothing at all. You can join me to ask the Nigerian police for an update by writing dear at Nigerian police with the handle. I'm going to drop their handle on the screen, in the description box and in the comment section. Dear at Nigerian police, please provide an update on Celine and Afiba. I just need us to drop that comment in the comment section of their latest posts so they can be reminded that we are waiting. We hope, <laughs> despite our hopes are blur and fuzzy, but we still hope that justice be given for Celine and the FIBA. If there are any more updates that come to light, be sure that I will let you know. Don't forget to join me on Instagram to nudge the Nigerian police and send a reminder to their Instagram page. That is the list that you and I can do. So guys, yes, we have come to the end of today's video. If you're new here, seeing my face for the first time, or if you've been watching without subscribing, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Give this video a big thumbs up. Drop all your comments down in the comment section and stay glued for we have so much more coming your way. It's me, your girl, Barista Neze, and this is Neze Vale. I'll see you guys in my next one for now. Bye.